So thanks for the intro, Forrest. My name is Jason. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our JavaScript SDK. Um, essentially, it's our SDK bundled in JavaScript that you can run in your web browser. And it's really so easy to use, you'll get it in an instant. Um, so briefly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe a little bit about what the JavaScript SDK is give you a little overview of how it works under the covers, um, give you some few notes on how to use it, and then I'll show you some demo apps. I think everyone will probably get the most out of seeing some code and seeing it in action and seeing what you can do with it. So first of all, what is a JavaScript SDK? Essentially, it is an M script and compiled version of our C++ SDK, which has been output to ASM.js, simply type JavaScript stuff. Uh, it runs completely in your web browser, so there's no server communications at all. It doesn't require any plugins or third-party JavaScript libraries. Essentially, it can analyze an image, a sequence of video frames, or a video in real time. Uh, in a nutshell, you pass it some image data, and it returns some metrics about it. So you can pass the image of our ancient alien's friend, and it'll give back some emotions, such as 100% joy, 100% engagement, valence of 98, and it'll give you the expressions below. You can see he's smiling, uh, mouth open, quite a few different statistics there, metrics that it'll give you. Um, so how does it work? In your web page, all you have to do is include our aftex.js file and create some JavaScript, create in a photo detector, and then hit start. It's that simple. Once you've started our SDK and the detector has started, it's going to, under the covers, spawn a web worker thread. And on this worker, we will download the SDK and initialize it on this worker thread. So it can do all of its computations on a thread and not affect the main thread of the web page that you're currently on. Um, once it's been downloaded and initialized, it'll send a message back to the worker sends a message back to our detector to tell it, hey, look, I'm all downloaded and I'm ready to go. And our detector will then trigger an event that you can listen to in your code that says, hey, I'm ready to go. You can start processing frames. Um, it's that easy. So in an easy one of the easiest things you could do is just take a standard image, you know, from your computer. You can upload it, make an app where you can upload it to a web page, or if you have this embedded in a web page, you can just analyze an image on the page. Um, all you really need to do, grab the image in JavaScript. Um, once it's loaded, depending on how you've coded it up, you simply take that image, you draw it to a hidden canvas element, then from that canvas element, you get the context and you call get image data, which basically returns the data in bytes in memory, and you pass it to the detector. And it'll do its work and send the data back to you. Um, when you call detector.process, it's going to take your image data and it's going to pass that over the wire into the worker with that image data. The worker will then process that image that binary data and then hand it back. Uh, the worker thread does not have access to the page, to the DOM. So you can't just pass it an image or say uh, the image node or anything like that from your web page. You have to actually get the bytes and pass that in a message to the worker. So the worker processes it and then passes that data back via post message. Um, once that is processed, the detector will then trigger an event back in your code with the results, and you can start processing them. And to get your results, you simply add an event listener on image result success, and it's going to take three parameters in this callback function, faces, which is going to be the metrics result that you got back, your image data, and then a timestamp. Um, if you want to keep track of timestamps of when things are processed or if you're processing a lot of things in a row. Um, the faces object is going to contain an array of all the faces found. Currently, our 
SDK is only returning metrics for one face. Uh, hopefully in the future we'll be able to do multiple faces. And so your return result would contain an array of all the faces and the expressions there, but right now it's just a one element array. Um, each face object is going to have three metric categories that you'll probably care about. It'll be the list of emotions, which I showed you earlier on an earlier slide, the expressions, and you'll also get an emoji too, which is kind of nifty. Um, if you're interested, you also get the feature point data, which are all the points on the face that our detector used to find the face Get the raw emotion data or expression data, but it's there if you if you care about it. And so, for example, if you want to get the joy emotion for the image that was just processed, you would look at the first element of the faces array, look at the emotions hash, and then get joy, and it should give you a value between zero and one hundred. Um, and it's pretty it's that simple. Um, Here's a few URLs that we have available to you. Um, the sample apps page um, has a few sample apps, and these two links, the next two links I have on there are the JS Fiddle links are also available on that page. So let me start off with a little demo right now. Now the first one I want to demo is our photo detector. So let me bring this up in my browser. So here's the page. This was that URL on that slide there. Um, as you can see right now, it's starting the detector. Please wait. The detector reports initialized. So that took about a second or so for it to download everything and start it up. And down here, it says choose file. So I'm just going to pick a image from my hard drive, upload it into my browser, and it should give me back the stats of my picture. And I'm going to take... Um, I'll take one of my wedding photos and choose file. There we go. So as you can see over here, these are the emotion tracking results. It found one face. It's got my appearance. This stuff is apparently Hispanic. Interesting. Male, got that correct. Glasses, no. Age 55 to 64. Well, I can tell you I'm not that old, so we might need to do some work on the appearance metrics there. But emotions, uh, joy is 100%, which is true. It's my wedding day. Sadness is zero, disgust is zero, contempt, anger, fear. Valence is 85, which is a measure of my, you know, overall happiness and engagement is 100%. Um, let's see, here's all the expressions that we got. So if you want to use those. And these little points right here, these are the feature point data that's also passed back. So if you wanted to actually map it onto the face, you can see these are the points that the detector actually detected on the face. And if we take a look at the code, you can always go edit in JS Fiddle. Um, it's really straightforward on how to do this. Um, this is all the JavaScript that you really need to do. Uh, you need to include our aftx.js file. And then once you've got that done, just create a new photo detector. You can set all the things, all of our options to be true. Um, you don't need to detect emojis or appearance or whatever. If you want just emotions, you can do that. It might be a little bit faster, a little bit less data to handle. And, and like I said, the next thing you do is you have your uninitialized success. This is called once everything is downloaded and the detector is loaded into memory and ready to go. And so what we do is we make the upload button visible at that point so you can finally upload your file. Um, after you upload your file, scroll down here a little bit. So we load here. We load the file. This is where we're just taking the, we're just using a standard file reader and reading the file into memory, and passing it right here into image loaded. Once it's here's the image on load, we're going to execute image loaded, which is this is what happens here. Like I said, we take this, we make this canvas element, get the width and the height, draw our image onto it. We're passing in the image. And then we just call detector.process 
with the get image data. And that's pretty much it. Once the process, once it's, the detector is run and it's got all your data, it's going to call back our on image result success right here with this function of the faces, the image of the timestamp. And so what we can do if faces.length is greater than zero, means we actually detected a face, we can go through, here's all the appearance metrics, the emotion metrics, um, we have expressions, and this is how you'll access the data when it comes back. So it's, that's pretty much it. That's how you get a do an image. Very, very, very straightforward, very easy. Um, I highly recommend you go to the developer.effectiva.com and check out our documentation here. It's very, very straightforward, too if you want to do it on your own. Um, what's next? So besides detecting photos, we can also use the webcam to take a video feed and do JavaScript detection off of that. So let's do that. Close this, close this. Let's go to our camera detector. So this is going to do, this is going to take my webcam and pass back real-time results on the page from the webcam. Instead of just a photo, we can do it, do it from the webcam. So if I hit start, it wants to use my camera. We'll say allow. There it is. Hello. Webcam active cloud there, and now it's running. So you can see faces found. Here's my emotions. There's my feature points. And now if we look right here, smile. Joy goes up. There's my emoji. We do some anger. Surprise. Joy. It's all doing on right here in the browser, all in real time. So you can kind of draw stuff in real time and detect stuff as it's happening in your web browser. Pretty nifty stuff. So then let's stop. And if we take a look at this JS fiddle, again, it's pretty simple. Um, similar to the photo detector one, you'll initialize a camera detector and you kind of pass in a few other um, items as to where your video is going to be and all that kind of stuff. Same type of footprint for everything. You add an event listener for initialized success. And on image result success, this is for every frame that it processes, it's going to give you back, it's going to call back this. So as it's processing frame by frame by frame, this will be executed over and over and over again. So you could take it and have your faces in your image and just output the data however you want on the side of the page there and you'll even have your feature points so you can draw that on the video too if that's what you want. It's all there. You can do whatever you want with that data when it comes back. Um, so next up, there's a nifty little app that I kind of cobbled together a couple weeks ago to analyze someone's Instagram account so we can kind of detect based on their images, the overall happiness, sadness, all the emotions that we're seeing in someone's Instagram feed. So I have that locally running. Let's give that a try. Let me set it to be, let's take 200 posts. And what I'll do is, I know this guy, Leo Messi, has a great um, Instagram feed. So if we click him, it's going to go start downloading his posts. And then we're downloading his images. And while we download each image, you can see we'll process them in the background thread and then start updating in here so you can see which ones are happy, which ones have surprise, which ones have fear, contempt. Let this run. And so this basically just took the first 200 photos from Leo Messi 
and we analyzed each one and kind of put them in these little buckets. Uh, so if we look at his joyful photos, these are the photos that all came up with some amount of joy. 99% uh, is pretty high. You can tell these are definitely happy ones. He's got a lot of happy photos in his feed. Lots of happy photos. And, you know, down here, 5%. This we probably could have excluded, but, you know, you can see mostly happy photos. If we go back, you take a look at surprise. So not too much surprise. This one has a lot of surprise in it, but these other photos, maybe not so much. It's very low. Uh, let's take a look at how about uh, sadness. So that one's got a little bit of sadness, not a very sad profile. Um, how about contempt? A little bit of contempt in this one. That This picture has, what, 97% contempt, some in here. So it's kind of a measure of his 0% anger. And engagement overall, most of his photos are very engaging. Um, you can see 100%, 100%, very, very engaging photos. Engagement's kind of tracking how much you're engaged with the camera, so you can see very, very engaging. Person there. Uh, we can try someone else. Should we see Donald Trump, see if he's angry. Read his posts. Downloading the images. See if you actually get anything. There's some happy ones there. Anger. Sadness, engagement. So overall, you can see his photos were about 57% engaging. You can see there's these are engaging, but the rest of them not so much. Nowhere near as much as Leo Messi. Joy, uh, not a lot of joyful pictures. Just some smiles there. But it's just kind of a fun little thing you can do. Um, essentially what this app does is it goes and grabs their public Instagram feed, parts of the JSON, and we pull out all the image URLs in there. And for each image URL, we read that image into memory and then pass it into a detector. So we basically call the detector 200 times because I picked what, 200 images. Um, so let's see here. So there's that demo. And let me show you guys one more. We'll talk about the game demo. This one's kind of fun. It's kind of an, it's just kind of a, I don't know what I'll call it, a proof of concept. What I'm going to do is we took a open source JavaScript based game and have a user play the game. And while they play the game, we're tracking their face and trying to figure out their emotional reaction to certain events in the game. And we record the game, so then once you're done, we can play back the game and your face video and kind of see how you reacted to how you played the game. Um, let's give this a try. The game only, I have it hard code to only play for 30 seconds, so we'll just get 30 seconds of metrics. But let's see if this works. Here's my game. All right, got to start playing. Yay. See? As you see the bottom down here, those are my metrics. I smile. I like this part. Yay. Oh. But then if I die, uh, that was, you see my anger goes up a little bit. All right, so now what we're doing is we're compiling a video of the game I just played. So we'll play that back. You can see this is my emotional graph over time. Joy is white, anger. When I died, I got a little anger here, surprise. So here we go. So if you take a look here, you can see I was smiling around here, smiling around here. Right about this point in time, my anger and contempt went up. And so let's play the video back and see if we can figure out 
why, oops, play, let's scroll a little bit. Why aren't you playing? No, maybe it's not playing because I broke it. Well, that's a bummer. All right, let's try this one more time. The second time's a charm, I guess. It's fun to smile while you play the game. Yay! Get hit by a bug. Or anger. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. Let's try this one more time. If this demo is still broken, then I declare it's just a beta demo and still needs more work. There we go. All right, so there's my video. It's anger, disgust, joy. Uh, my video won't play back. That's a bummer. I'll have to take a look and figure that out. But in any event, you can imagine using this in the real world where you're actually testing it out with somebody's game. Maybe they're surfing a web page. Maybe they're doing who knows what. But you can track their expressions in real time and create a chart down here and kind of track their emotions over time. Uh, I use D3 um, to do this. This is just an SVG path based on the uh, data we're getting back from the SDK. And so you can kind of chart this as it goes through. A little bummed that it's not playing back, but that's why it's merely a demo. And let's see, I think that is about, I have one more demo I can try. I have five minutes left. Let's try this YouTube demo, let's see if this one works. Similar to the game, it's going to try and track my emotions as I watch a YouTube video. So let's take this one that I have right here, let's see if it'll play. No, perhaps not. But a demo not quite ready for prime time. Restart. Nope, no dice on the YouTube demo. Probably should have given them a little bit more love before I demoed them to everybody. But overall, this is the kind of cool stuff you can do with our JavaScript SDK. All in the web browser, no server needed. No plugins and pretty easy to use. Um, I'd say check out the instructions for it here, AppTex SDK for the web. Um, really easy, how to analyze a camera feed, how to do a video frame street, analyze a photo. Great instructions. You can almost copy and paste it and go for it. It's one small web page. It should be easy to use. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so we're recording all these sessions um, as we we do them, and we're going to post them, and we'll send a link out to everybody through Eventbrite um, for all these videos. And so everyone should be able to grab the videos and take a look at them uh, at some point once it's up. We'll just send out an email with the with the links once they're up. So I see another question about can you extend the SDK? Um, not as of yet. There's not much to extend. Um, possibly in the future, I mean, we're on version 3 so far, and we're still making changes to it every, every few weeks. So let's put that on the stack of stuff that we want to look at to make it extensible. Because as of right now, it's pretty much its own thing. You download it, you use it. What you see is what you get.
Any more questions? All right. Well, thank you for attending, everybody. I hope this was helpful. Um, go out there, take the SDK, throw it on your web page, and see what you can do with it. Um, oh, does it take a lot of memory to run? Uh, good question. It probably needs at least one gigabyte of RAM, and you'll probably want a, a fast processor for this thing. Um, one of the things you will notice with it is when you're analyzing a video feed, uh, the response rate of the data is going to be dependent on your CPU speed. If you have a faster computer, you're going to need a lot more frames processed per second than if you have a slower one. Um, so the frame rate will be definitely slower. It's all based on the processor. So, you know, I have a pretty fast machine here, and I could probably get about 15 frames per second processed, uh, which is good. But if you have a slower machine, it might be down to three or four. Um, it's less RAM and memory restricted, but it's processor speed is what you're going to notice the most. All right, any more questions? Well, thanks for listening to me ramble on about this. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you guys can make some cool JavaScript demos, too. Hope to hear from you all in the future.